At the Myers-Briggs Company, we've reached out to a variety of experts in the field to provide complimentary webinars for both our college partners and any institution of higher education. Today's topic will focus on how to prepare to remain virtual via logic models, and we're happy to partner with Dr. Al Solano to deliver this webinar. Dr. Al Solano is a coach and founder of the Continuous Learning Institute. A big believer in kindness, he helps institutions of higher education to plan and implement homegrown practices that get results for students by coaching them through a process based on what he calls the three C's, clarity, coherence, and consensus. In addition, his bite-sized practitioner-based articles on student success strategies, institutional planning and implementation, and educational leadership are implemented at institutions across the country. He has worked directly with over 40 colleges and universities and has trained well over 5,000 educators. He has coached colleges for over a decade, worked at two community colleges, and began his education career in K-12. And with that, take it away, Al. Thank you, welcome to this webinar. The outcomes for today are to understand logic model basics and to understand how to use a logic model to plan to remain virtual. Now, why are we planning to remain virtual? Well, in March, we saw institutions of higher education, in fact, all of education, all of society have to move to a remote format, virtual format. And what we know now from the data is that we will probably have to remain virtual for a fall semester and who knows, maybe for the spring. Given the rush and the mad dash to go to remote and go to virtual, there wasn't a lot of time for planning. So now uh, with the spring semester ending at many campuses, this is the time to really look at what is our plan? How do we remain virtual for the fall and potentially the spring? A logic model is a nice graphic organizer, a nice visual, so everybody can have um, a sense of where we're going. So with that, let's learn about some logic model basics. What are they? Logic models are used to show the relationships between outcomes, outputs, activities, and resources. Creating a logic model helps all involved think about what they're doing and what they hope to achieve. So in short, the basic components of a logic model resource is basically what you have, activities, what you do, outputs or deliverables, what you produce, and outcomes, the results. Now let's use a really simple example that so many of us can relate to, especially nowadays. Uh, let's look at a logic model to get rid of a headache. And the way you read a logic model and even create a logic model is you work from right to left. So if we start at the far right, we know that the outcomes that we want is we want our headache to go away. We want to be able to go back to work and do what we're doing. We just want to be happy. Well, what are outputs? What are things that we need to have to achieve those outcomes? Well, we need to be hydrated and we need to feel more relaxed. But how do you get to be hydrated and feel more relaxed? Well, there are strategies or activities for that. To be hydrated, you need to drink water, right? Uh, to feel more relaxed, perhaps you put on a hot compress or take an aspirin or sit in a quiet room. In order to implement those strategies and activities, then you need resources or inputs, right? So you need the actual water, an actual hot compress, an aspirin in a quiet room. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this uh, logic model template here, and I will take you through how to use it um, in order to think about, well, what's our plan to remain virtual? So again, similar to the example I provided for the headache, we start from right to left. So the outcomes that we want, as you can see in this logic model, are divided into short-term, mid-term, and long-term. So a timeline that we can consider short term is given that we're now in April, maybe the remaining spring semester through June 30th. A midterm outcome could be uh, summer and a long term fall and spring. So the prompt would be, what does the institution expect to be completed or activities that are ongoing during these timeframes? So let me give you an example of a midterm um, outcome by August 30th. 100% of faculty will be trained on Canvas, Zoom, and 
basic remote pedagogical principles. 100%, that includes all adjunct faculty. It's ambitious, but it needs to happen. Step two, you can actually work on the activities and outputs simultaneously. The prompts would be, to meet our outcomes, we will need to complete these set of activities and outputs. Once the activities are completed or underway, they will produce the following deliverables. So for example, activities, we wanna outline trainings, we wanna prep for them, right? We wanna send out, save the dates. We wanna rehearse them, right? Do a, a dry run of the trainings. And our output is, for example, maybe we wanna accomplish 25 trainings that would be completed. Resources, inputs, how do we make sure that we complete our set of activities? What would do we have? What are our resources? So uh, we would uh, more than likely need an instructional designer or distance education coordinator, an expert faculty, software. The purpose statement is really interesting. Um, some teams feel better prepared to articulate purpose statement after working on the logic model for a bit. That's understandable. Now, other teams focus on creating a purpose statement right from the get-go. That's fine, too. Either way is fine. Uh, you can choose the path that best suits your context. So an example of a purpose statement would be to ensure that students receive the best quality education remotely. Assumptions and external factors are really important. Assumptions are those reality checks. Uh, in other words, what are indicators of success for planning to remain virtual? You know, this is where we need to list and unpack issues of capacity, logistics, buy-in, et cetera, and write down how to address them. External factors might influence the institution's ability to even do the work that's planned or to take stock of potential barriers to achieving the outcome. So, for example, uh, assumption could be that faculty will implement what they are taught. That's a, that's a major assumption. Um, external factor could be that not all faculty have internet access and computers at home. That's actually a very real situation. So how do we deal with that? So some final words on a logic model is that it serves as the basis for meetings. And as highly visual cre creatures, it allows us as human beings to literally be on the same page. The logic model is a living document that will be modified over time. Now here, this is the piece that's really critical. I provided one example um, and one strategy, but a logic model will have several activities and strategies. And it's important to put all those activities and strategy, strategies into a separate document with the names of those who are gonna be responsible for implementing them. This document, which could be a simple spreadsheet, allows those responsible to provide a status on each of the activities. For more resources and to learn more about logic models, you can visit the Continuous Learning Institute website. Resources are divided into institutional planning and implementation, student success strategies, and educational leadership. Um, that's me in my casual uh, Zoom attire. If you have any questions about logic models or any other topic covered on the website, please don't hesitate to contact me at al at continuous-learner.com. I hope you enjoyed learning about logic models and seeing that they are a nice graphic organizer to help you plan to uh, move forward remaining uh, virtual. Thank you very much.